Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 201, we'll take a look at microservices communication protocols and the various trade-offs between these. There's three kinds of basic protocols we can use between services in a microservices architecture, and that's using REST via an API gateway, using request reply messaging, which actually I talked about in lesson one of Software Architecture Monday, and also a Google's remote procedure call, GRPC. Now, for each of these, I need to do a little bit of background because we're going to look at the trade-offs of all three of these options for communicating between services. One of those trade-offs we're going to be talking a lot about happens to be stamp coupling and bandwidth issues. Now, I devoted an entire lesson 105 to the stamp coupling issue, which is an important issue when we start talking about these communication protocols. So if you haven't seen or are unfamiliar with what stamp coupling and the corresponding bandwidth issues are, I would encourage you to watch lesson 105 first and then return back to this lesson. Now, for each of these three protocols, uh, we're going to be looking at a scenario where we have a wish list service. And this is a service that maintains our customers' wish lists. We also have a customer profile service with the name and address, bill to, ship to, and all that kind of information. Our scenario to look at the trade offs between these is that the wish list service needs to get the name of a customer but it doesn't have that name. It only has a customer ID, so it must get that information through a profile service. So with the REST request reply messaging and also gRPC, uh, let's take a look at each of these ways of communicating between services and these various protocols and the corresponding trade-offs associated with these. And let's start with the pretty classic REST uh, communication. Now, the reason I'm saying REST via an API gateway is because we do have multiple instances of the profile service in microservices. Therefore, a wish list needs some sort of load balancing capability to know which instance to go to. So necessarily, it goes through the API gateway. And typically, we'll invoke an endpoint that, let's say, the user interface accesses to get customer information. For example, app 1.0 customer. And so once I invoke this API, uh, the gateway invokes one of the healthy services there in the instance, uh, grabs the profile information, and sends all of that information back to the wish list. And we see our first problem. It's what I described in lesson 105, which is stamp coupling and bandwidth issues. You see, wish list only needs the name. However, when I invoke that API call, I'm receiving all of the data. That's a lot of bandwidth utilization, plus I'm bound to that specific contract. Now, one of the ways to mitigate some of the risk is to basically use a field selector on the URL. For example, I'm going to do a get, an HTTP get on app 1.0 customer question mark uh, field equals name. Okay, that might be an example. However, it does reduce bandwidth because that's the only data that's actually being sent. However, it's the same contract. So first of all, this requires additional logic in the profile service to filter out fields that it's not going to send. And it really does not address stamp coupling. It addresses the bandwidth issue. Well, one of the things I can do to kind of also mitigate some of the rest issues that we're seeing here is to basically just create a new endpoint. And that reduces bandwidth and stamp coupling. So I'm going to create a new endpoint called app 1.0 customer dash name, and I'm going to do a get on that endpoint. Now, this will, in fact, reduce bandwidth because I'm only sending the name and I've got my own contract. However, for those of you watching, you immediately see that this does usually violate standard or strict REST principles. You see, customer is the resource in REST. Name is an attribute. 
And so by putting attributes as resources, it starts to violate REST principles. It also starts exposing all of my inner service calls to the public through our API gateway. And what results from that is basically over polluting my API call with all, or my API gateway with all these additional inner service call endpoints. And it really does confuse the north south communication in terms of which endpoint should I be calling because we have 20 that are related to customer. <laughs> so we can start to see some of the trade offs associated with REST. Well, let's take a look now at using request reply messaging. Uh, what I talked about in lesson one in Software Architecture Monday. Here, I need to get the name of the customer, so I use what's called request reply messaging. I have a request queue that all profile instances are now listening to. And so as you can see, uh, this gives me kind of an automated load balancing capability. I don't need a load balancer for uh, targeting this towards whatever instance because whatever instance is healthy and listening will receive that request. Now, Profile is going to send it back, that, that name, on a reply queue. So Wishlist makes a request and Control comes back to Wishlist because this is an asynchronous protocol. Wishlist does its work. Meanwhile, Profile does the query, sends the name to the response queue. Now, once Wishlist is ready, it does a blocking wait and receives that name on the reply queue. What we notice right here, first of all, is that we have a private dedicated contract. This is a contract between me, the Wishlist, and also the Profile Service. So this not only reduces bandwidth because only the name is being sent, but also reduces stamp coupling because this is the contract, the customer name. <laughs> also, it does decouple these services and provides that load balancing capability we need in microservices. However, here's where the trade-offs start to happen because we are bypassing the API gateway and corresponding functionality, cross-cutting functionality that that gateway may be doing. It may be doing auditing, metrics gathering, or even security. And because of that, we potentially might be opening up some security holes. However, the good part about this is it does provide our own private API. No one accessing RESTful services sees these contracts nor sees these protocols. So it gives us a private API for East-West and maintains that clean API for North-South, kind of that user interface communication. The trade-off here, however, it is difficult to document. There are no automated uh, tools that allow us to generate documentation like we can in the API gateway. Well, there is one other option, and that's to use gRPC, uh, specifically gRPC-LB. This is a remote procedure call. So essentially, Wishlist needs to get the name for the profiles from the profile service. So it makes a gRPC call. This is a socket-based call, an HTTP2 persistent connection sitting on top of protocol buffers, what's called protobuf. Now, the wishlist does have a gRPC stub. This is the client stub. And then the profile becomes the gRPC server. So you can tell these are fairly tightly bound. I have a piece of the profile services code that I'm executing. Now, because we have multiple instances, necessarily we need to use specifically gRPC LB protocol. So we have a load balancing protocol or policy uh, that the stub continues to communicate with. And then we have some sort of a load balancer here. I'm using Trafic, but it could be any load balancer that monitors all of those profile services, communicates with the load balancing policy server so that the wish list knows who to connect to and where to go and which profile instance is healthy. Well, the nice thing is, like messaging, this gives us a private dedicated contract. Therefore, we don't have the stamp coupling and bandwidth issues that we face with REST. It's also the fastest possible protocol that you could use between services. It is as a direct socket connection. 
But like messaging, though, here's where the trade-offs start to occur. Because it does, like messaging, bypass the API gateway, hence could potentially open up some security holes, bypass auditing or metrics gathering, whatever cross-cutting concern we're actually doing in that gate API gateway. But the unique thing about gRPC is that it does tightly bound or tightly bind services together. Uh, probably the other negative is that it does, unlike messaging, it does require some sort of load balancer, but it does give us that private API for East-West, which I really enjoy. But just remember, it is hard to document that API. So there's our three possibilities. Let me offer um, some uh, guidance in terms of what I usually use each of these for. Um, REST via the API gateway. I, I always use this for north-south communication, um, access to uh, external or a user interface kind of query or command to the gateway. Um, but also, if I need all or mostly all of the customer information, I might as well just go to the RESTful API. It's there and I'm going to suffer that contract uh, um, problem with the stamp coupling as well as the bandwidth anyway. Uh, but when I, when I look at request reply messaging, I typically do use this for east-west communication. Uh, take a look at lesson one, my first lesson in Software Architecture Monday of how this works and the opportunities that we get from using request reply messaging. However, also when I only need partial information from a service, uh, this is usually my go-to to avoid stamp coupling and bandwidth issues. Also, this is clearly a go-to communication protocol when I just need to do fire and forget async communication. Now, our gRPC LB, I would also use for east-west communication, um, but usually when I need low latency and also when services are already tightly bound to each other in some sort of workflow, uh, then that trade-off becomes less significant. All right, well, there's some options for communication protocols within microservices, and this has been Lesson 201. Uh, stay tuned in two more Mondays uh, for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.